Hey guys, it's Marco from Nari Media, and today I'm gonna give you the most in-depth nano banana image generation tutorial. So today I'm gonna go through a bunch of examples and give you sample prompts and everything to get the best control and output for nano banana. Now, this just came out through Google. They're telling me the tips and tricks. They're saying save these templates. So what I've done is I've compiled everything into one document. You can comment nano or banana or nano banana or even a banana emoji down below and I will send you a link to the free prompt guide. So today I'm gonna to show you how we create really, really good images. Now the first thing is, if you are keeping up with tech news and whatnot and have time to, I'd recommend going over to X and following Google AI. And they're always dropping tips and tricks on, you know, the best tips for VO3, image, uh, image prompts, image generation prompts. So you can see they always have great guides and references and everything like that. Or you can just follow me on YouTube and I will give you these updates with visuals. So, you know, some people like to read, that's great, but let's get into it. All right, so this is the ultimate prompt guide for image generation with Nano Banana. Now, I'm gonna give you guys this full document for free. Like I said, comment below at Nano Banana. Also, if you guys are too busy to do your own marketing and content creation, reach out to us, Nari Media, and we do some really, really cool stuff here. But this is the first example here, photo realistic scenes. I'm not gonna go too much in detail. I'm gonna scroll pretty quick. I wanna, your time's valuable, so let's get going. All right, so for photorealistic scenes, you'll see in this document here, and the way it works, the way I structured it, is I'll do the template uh, above, and then I'll just do the sample prompt. I did a lot of birds and natures in this because that's what I love. And then you'll see how it works. So the first one is just uh, creating images from text and how to get better results. You'll see here, you know, shop type, subject, um, action expression, environment, um, mood, lighting, camera lens detail, uh, key texture details, etc., and aspect ratio. So I did one with a uh, photorealistic of a majestic owl perched on um, wood looking down at a small mouse. So there you have it right there. Pretty simple, really cool. That's just, we'll, we'll get a little more in depth here now. Now on to the next one. Now this is editing images with text. Now what we want to do in the first one is adding or removing elements. You'll see here I also have the template where we have the subject, add, remove, element, etc. to, and then ensure the description of how you should change or integrate it. So this one I did, I took a cardinal and I said add a small festive hat on its head, make sure it's sitting comfortably, match the soft lighting. All right, so there you have it right there. Just simple. It's really cool what you could do. You could remove things too and add, but in this example, I just added. Now the next we're gonna get into is inpainting, editing an image or specific area or semantic masking. So this is like putting a mask over something, changing the color, changing the style. So this one, we can change one part of the image while leaving the rest untouched. So there's my template prompt, which you can use. This, These are honestly game changing. So save this document, reference it. It's gonna save you so much time. All right, so when in this example here, you can see I used the image of a bird feeder. I said change only the tin feeder to a natchik a natural uh, wood feeder and it just did it perfect kept everything the same kept the kept the birds the same and yeah very simple so you can use that for a lot you can mask other things other parts of it but use make sure you use the prompt make sure you reference the specific element and then the new element description and make sure you always say keep everything else the same all right accurate text and images now for brands i've been trying a lot and i know when you have a product with a lot of information like i was doing a san pellegrino can it has lots of tiny tiny font it's make still making some errors there but for larger text and more simple text this one works pretty good. So template here, we have the image, brand concept, text to render, and then the style and everything. So clean, modern, minimalistic, bird watching group, the feathered friend, text is clean, bold, uh, sans serif, a font should be simple and styles with a feather integrated into the text. And there you have it, the feathered friend. So for simple text like this, it's working great. All right, next is product mockups and commercial photography. Now this one is clean professional products for e-commerce or advertising or brands. And I have the template prompt here as well with the product description on the background with the type of lighting. And I did my example prompt here. I just said, you know, a studio lit of a handmade wooden birdhouse. Showcase it's clean ultra with some gentle steam rising. So there you have it right there. 
pretty cool. You can do this with any product. Now the next one is for minim minimalistic and negative space design. Now this is cool if you wanted to create some backgrounds to add text for you know quotes or if you're doing a promotion and you needed just something in the corner. So here you can see a minimalistic in the bottom right, left, etc. where you want it. Background is vast empty color of the canvas. So what I did was I wanted a simple delicate leaf in the bottom corner and the background soft. And all these were created first try with these prompts. So just to let you know, these were all created first try. I'll go into Gemini and just show you after this the generation of these and then we have the um, comic book storyboard type style. So this one is a single comic book panel in blank art style. You can choose any art style you want, character description. And for this one, I just used a watercolor style with soft blues and greens and a hummingbird <laughs> that says a perfect morning to collect nectar. So there you have it. Like it's getting good for creating text as well. As you can see, as long as you give it the right input, you get better output. All right, now we're going to the advanced composition. So this is compiling multiple images. I did another tutorial on this where I took 10 images and put it into one. This now is just getting a little more specific of exactly where you want to put things because sometimes like you might not have as good control or you might have a really, really large prompt and you want to put a bunch of stuff in, but I'd add a few things at a time to make it a little easier, right? So for this one, what I wanted to do was, so this first one is a style transfer. So we're changing the style. So we want to go from a realistic lush forest now to Mona Lisa, like just a water painting Mona Lisa style, just there you go, you can see it's painted now. So that's pretty easy, you can make things look painted just with a simple prompt, it's keeping everything else the same. Now the next one is combining multiple images. So for this one, you can see I have the template prompt there, you have your image one, image two, element one, element two, and then the description. So I have the butterfly, and the monarch butterfly, and the sunflower, and I want it to show the butterfly on the sunflower with the lighting and shadows to adjust, to adjust to the natural outdoor environment. And there you have it, bang, just like that. Pretty cool, it looks really, really realistic and you could use that for like an advertisement or whatever. Paint it, make it into a puzzle, <laughs> whatever you wanna do. Now we're doing high fidelity detail preservation. So this one is you want element one from element two and ensure everything stays the same. So for example, I'm using the Feathered Friend logo that I created above. I have this gal with nothing on her shirt and I said, put that on the shirt and bang, there you have it. And it kept her exactly the same. It added the logo on the shirt. So pretty cool if you're using this for exactly this, like trying to just show off your logos or clothing brand or anything like that. Very, very cool. And then we have best practices here. Better the input, the better the output. You know what I mean? It's not gonna be able to read your mind. In your mind, you might be like, oh, I got this vision. But yeah, the better you can give it direction, the better results you'll have. And yeah, I'm not gonna read through all this. You guys, like I said, comment nano or banana or nano banana down below, and I will send you this guide for free. Now I'll pop over quick to Gemini here. All right, to show you just some of the examples of the back end, you just literally upload the image, add the prompt. That's how you do it in Gemini. And it'll pop out the image down below. And then I did another one here, the minimalistic, um, just pop in the prompt. And this one was just a text to image. There you have it, comic book style, water watercolor art. And just show you that these were created on the, uh, on the first try here. So you upload the image, there it is in watercolor. Um, I uploaded these two, you just literally attach the images and put the prompt and there you have it. So there you guys have it. I hope you found value in this and don't forget to like and subscribe. I got cool new AI marketing videos and tools coming soon. So yeah, thanks so much for watching.